Hello, my name is Vincent Dufort and I am with the New England QIN QIO. Today I will show you a tool we have developed to help you target areas of improvement in domains related to the value-based purchasing program. The point of this tool is to assist you in identifying areas where improvement will maximize your DRG withholding reimbursement. The model we have developed is an approximation. It does not promise to calculate your exact reimbursement, but rather to help you plan your interventions by showing you the approximate impacts of changes in different domains and individual measures. The tool will give you an idea of the magnitude of impact changes in different measures can have on your performance. Note that scoring is based on the better of your achievement score and improvement score on each measure within a domain. We will get to that later. Let's start with a navigation through the tool. We have several tabs on the bottom of the spreadsheet. First, representing the years of the measure from 2013 through 2020. Each year's domain and scores are calculated on that year's tab. Next, we have the executive summary tab, which gives you comparisons of each domain's scores across all the years, as well as the reimbursement estimates and summary scores. After that, on the bottom of this slide, we have the domain weights, which shows how the domain weighting makes up the summary score and how that has changed over the years as well, when certain domains came into existence and when other domains were retired. The next tab is the baseline and performance period, which shows you the timeline for data used in calculating baseline and performance periods. The performance timelines are especially valuable to know how much time is left in a particular domain to affect a change in scoring. The next tab on the bottom is the minimum requirements for scoring in a measure and domain. This gives you the cases needed for a measure and a domain score to be counted towards the hospital combined scores. Now we can hop directly to entering data in the domain tables to determine the domain scores. Note that the number format is critical for correct score calculation and the formats are different for the different tables. A hint is that the achievement threshold and benchmarks determine the format of the data you will be entering. Usually you will know your hospital baseline scores, so go ahead and enter these. It is with the hospital performance scores that you can play around with different scenarios to see how different performance numbers can give you differing measures and domain scores. From this next slide, just to drive home the importance of correct number formats, notice that on the top the table, we have incorrectly entered baseline and performance as decimal scores, 0 0.73, 0 0.87, etc., instead of 73, 87, and so on. The result is that the score is incorrect the bottom of this slide, the same table with corrected number formats shows a scoring that makes sense. I want to briefly demonstrate the two ways to obtain good scores. As we see with PC01 here at the top line, we started off with a dismal 0.4 in our baseline period but dropped to 0.01. This gives us an improvement score of 9. For the achievement, however, because the threshold and benchmark are both zero, it is nearly impossible to get high performance scores. However, because it is the highest of the improvement and performance that counts, in this case, the improvement wins the day. Below that, we have the CAUTI score that is quite low, 0.01 baseline, and uh, remains the same in the performance period. Because the score did not change, the improvement is zero. 
However, we see that the achievement score is high because the 0.01 is much better than the achievement threshold. Again, the higher of the two wins the day for the domain measure. Let's look at setting up different scenarios to see how we can influence the outcomes of the reimbursement. As you can see, the top table has little in either improvement or performance. The result is weak reimbursement. If you look at the bottom table, you can see that the change in performance has given us both a higher improvement score and achievement score. The result is substantially higher domain score as well as remarkably higher reimbursement. Finally, I just want to highlight an aspect of the tool that is helpful and reflects the intent of the VBP program. In the cases where you have insufficient cases to be eligible for a domain, the weighting of that domain gets redistributed among the remaining domains. As long as you have enough domains reporting, you can still get a performance score and it is not adversely affected by a missing domain score. As long as you have sufficient domains reporting, is reflected in this tool. In this example, the hospital performance before reweighting would have been only 26.5. After redistribution of the missing weights, it jumps to 53%. So there you have it. The tool is simple to use and informative. The numbers you get are a good approximation of the direction and magnitude of your performance scores. Remember when filling out tables, correct number formats are critical to getting you a valid score. Because of domain reweighting, missing data is okay, up to a point. You can use the tool to help you understand how changes in scores will impact changes in reimbursement. Of course, it is up to you to determine where focus in any of these measures will likely give you changes. I want to acknowledge the movers and the shakers at the hospitals who get QI done. I also want to acknowledge Jean at the QI and QIO for assistance in edits and re-edits of the tool, as well as Gail for support 